Hi, this is Charlie Silvestri from Up Close and Acoustic. I wanted to give you an update as to uh, the disposition of the show, the disposition of its host. Um, as you may or may not know, doesn't matter. Uh, after having spoken to Robin Armstrong from the progressive rock outfit cosmograph about having an open and honest discussion and relationship on social media regarding his project i thought it was a good idea that perhaps i should have a more open and honest discussion with you about my project so up close and acoustic as I, as I started to say, as you may or may not know, uh, unfortunately, in January, I lost my wife. She passed away from cancer. Um, she had been suffering from it for many years, various different types. Every time we thought it was beaten back, it would return worse uh, to the point where finally there was no fighting back anymore. Uh, she always hated referring to dealing with cancer as fighting it anyway. I can tell you that um, at my last conversation with her, unfortunately it coincided with a spike in COVID and I wasn't allowed to visit her in the hospital, even though I was in the hospital demanding to see her they would not allow me to see her so we we communicated by phone and facetime and even though she had said countless times that she hates hearing people fighting in quotes cancer she didn't like that she did like that she was a survivor multiple times over and the last conversation we had, she uh, said that she wasn't ready to die yet. And I wasn't ready to have her die yet, believe me. The impact on my life, and, and then unfortunately onto Up Close and Acoustic, is this. Uh, I can't at the moment, keep up the pace I used to set with up close and acoustic. There were times when I would have four or five interviews a week, and I'm not talking about uh, remote Zoom conversations. I'm talking about bands would be here in my home, and we would be recording four or five days a week uh, because of my own bouts of depression after what happened to Judy, my wife, and a, a weird, weird thing, uh, social anxiety, which, believe me, people who know me would never for a second believe I could possibly suffer from social anxiety. I'm too outspoken or too outgoing or however you want to put it, I feel more comfortable at times talking to 50,000 people when I'm in a radio studio than I often do talking to one or two people in person. Just ask my manager at my, my job how many times I could stumble over a sentence when I'm just talking with him or sometimes with uh, her if it's an assistant manager. I'm far more comfortable behind a microphone talking to a lot of people. That brings me around to what I, I want to say, since I wanted to preface, pre, uh, sorry, preface that and preface this whole conversation with what I've been dealing with since January. Uh, since the pace has slowed down of my recording, has not stopped, uh, it's just my pace has slowed down a little bit. I hope to speed it up soon because I have people out there 
that I have promised uh, I would speak with. And I have people out there who represent artists that I promised I would speak with. Uh, specifically, I wanted to mention uh, people with so much patience. Uh, Jessica Smucker, she's a performer, singer-songwriter. Jason Ager, uh, another singer-songwriter. They are both aware of what uh, happened in my life, and they have given me a lot of uh, understanding and leeway as far as scheduling or rescheduling in both cases. Uh, I get together. Um, Jill Santa Benitez down in Texas. She contacts me often because she has a roster of people that she wants me to speak with musicians, performers, bands. Um, all of those people will be gone back to, I will reschedule. The show has already started up again. And so I have to seriously thank other people who were waiting for a while to speak with me. And that was uh, Jessica Gray, whose show is already up on PRX and available to NPR affiliates. If NPR affiliates or people who work there are listening, please buy my show. It's awesome. It's a great show. A lot of great conversation. A lot of terrific music. It's a show that I would like to listen to. And that's always what I shoot for. If it's something that I want to listen to, then I'm comfortable releasing it into the wild and hoping that somebody picks it up. So if anybody's watching this and has any influence, say, hey, there's this show I heard about, Up Close and Acoustic. I also want to thank Arielle Silver, who came onto the show. Uh, she's currently based out in California, but she had a Northeast tour and she stopped by my humble abode to record a show and uh it was very comfortable and like i said it, i'm getting back into the swing of recording at home also want to thank robin armstrong uh, i mentioned him at the start i've got to thank him for setting an example of having open dialogue and honest conversations with the people who support him and his music I would like to do more of that with people who support me and up close and acoustic. So got to, got to thank those people there. Um, KTNA in Alaska, Talkeetna. Thank you for buying my shows. I really appreciate it. KCAW in Sitka, Alaska. I'm big in Alaska. What happened? I don't even understand that, but I'm grateful. Thank you for buying my shows um 96.7 fm radio st pete down in florida thank you for buying my shows and 96.5 wslr in sarasota thank you for buying my shows a very big thank you has to go out to um probably the first person i ever collaborated with in a job in my life. And that was later in my life as an adult, as a 39 year old. Um, when I started my second career, aside from being a craftsman, uh, when I went into radio, um, Randy Dasher, the first guy that I ever worked closely with and in tandem with, and a true collaboration in true collaboration with. Um, he has tried to get me to go back on the air with him several times over the last couple of years. And uh, leading up to Judy's passing last year, I, I couldn't leave the house. I needed to be here for her. She couldn't be left alone. Um, but I finally was able to say yes to Randy and share a shift with him, an on-air shift with him at WDEL in Delaware, in Wilmington, Delaware. Now, it's a talk show. It's not a music show. But it took, it took a lot for me to say okay to that because I've been 
it's been a self-imposed exile. Um, just down to my own odd onset of social anxiety after Judy passed away and getting out the door, get it driving for 40 minutes to get down to Delaware and get on the air. And the funny thing is, as soon as I got on the air behind a microphone, but in a radio station that broadcasts to a lot of people, both in, in, in Delaware, a little bit in Pennsylvania and a lot of South Jersey, um, that was a lot and i appreciate the fact that randy still thinks of me as somebody he could call up and go on the air so uh in addition to updating you on what's going on with up close and acoustic i wanted to say thank you to randy dasher for getting me off my ass out of the house and behind a microphone at a radio station and uh, putting in some time on the air. It was a lot of fun. I think I'm going to do more of these. Uh, like I said, Robin Armstrong has an episode of Up Close and Acoustic coming up soon. I'm already editing it. We just talked two days ago. And I'm already putting it together. I highly recommend you tune in for that when it is released. It will be released as usual on public radio exchange and i hope public radio stations out there decide to buy it he's a very outspoken guy about his music about the music industry especially he has a very unique and he in turn is also very outspoken about the music industry i think that's something to look forward to that is a show to look forward to if you're a musician especially if you own a record label, large or small, um, you might want to tune in for that because Robin owns a record label. It's called Gravity Dream. If you want to check it out, uh, you'll hear all about it uh, when I release the show. And to everybody else out there, I want to say, I do want to hear from you. I do want to talk with you. Like um, a local guy that I wanted to have on for so long and because of judy's illness and covid they coincided unfortunately for for her and myself unfortunately it was a thing that happened at the same time but i want to i would love to talk to joe d bartolo who is uh a new jersey singer songwriter longtime musician and writes such incredible songs that he should be as well known if there was any justice in the world uh, he should be as well known as bruce springsteen or you know any any other new jersey you could possibly think of in the music business he is not recognized around the world like he should be so jessica smucker jason ager jill santa benitez joe di bartolo i would love to get with all of you soon randy if you have any more time coming up on wdel where you need a fred norris to your howard stern please give me a call i would do it again thank you for getting me out of the house and to everybody else who follows up close and acoustic and my shenanigans here and what i do um please stand by the show is coming and uh, they will keep coming i have no intention of giving it up I enjoy it. Uh, it gives me one more reason to get my ass in gear and get going with my life again. Until next time, uh, please check out the show. Go to PRX and listen to some of the podcasts. You can listen on demand. And uh, if you enjoy them, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please listen to PRX if you know people again. Uh, who work at NPR or uh, public radio, say, hey, maybe you should check out this Up Close and Acoustic show. I hear from the guy who creates it. It's really good. But trust me, I wouldn't release it if I didn't think it was really good. I've spent enough time in radio knowing what's not good and hearing what's not good. My show's good. 
check it out. And on that note, I'll see you soon. Thanks for listening.